Abang Rizal, Abang Pola, man. Hi. Uh, we have met before on the conference at the Mercedes event. Yep. You, me, Yusuf, Alan Wu. I remembered your story. I thought, amazing story. The reason why I thought you should come and talk here is because you are a normal guy. You're a normal everyday guy that is doing what I would call not normal things. Because normal things is like for people, they go on weekend, they go to the mall, they watch movie, they go and buy things, play their phone. You're not doing that. And I remember you because you were famous to me because you did Fjord Raven. Oh, yeah. You applied and you did this, yeah. this Arctic trip with yeah. dogs. Yeah. So maybe we start with who you are. Okay, who's Rizal Khalif? Where do you come from? Uh, okay, hi, Chuang. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, it's an honor, actually. Yeah. Uh, thanks. <laughs> who's Rizal Khalif? Yeah. Uh, I'm just an, you know, Ipo, Ipo guy. People say Ipo Mali Talak Sombong. So I'm just yeah, like yeah. a typical Ipo guy. Uh, I don't know. I just grew up there and then... Uh, how to say it? I'm just an Ipo guy, yeah. a normal guy who. Your parents? What did they do? What was your dad? What was your mom? Oh, okay. Um, my 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 father was a policeman. Okay. Uh, but the those days we have this police field force. N- now it's PGA. Police field force is like they go to the jungle. So like my father, he was the one fighting communists. He was one of oh, them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If you if you meet him, you'll hear a lot of stories about communist time at that time. Yeah. And then. Uh, he yeah he he's my inspiration in a way you know my father yeah. so yeah uh, my father is a policeman uh, I rarely see him I grew up rarely see him because most of the time he's in the in the jungle and then uh, my mom being a housewife but being a wife to a policeman who doesn't earn much she herself I don't really see when I grew up because every morning she would just like uh, go around driving. Uh, you know, last time uh, like is van, oh so yeah? driving okay. around uh, from one town to another town to village to another village, selling you know alcohol, alcohol, party tapuwe. Those days, you know that kind oh, of thing. Oh, uh, tapuwe, tapuwe sales. Yeah, uh, all yeah, those yeah. things, you know. So trying to make some extra money, lah. Yeah, actually trying to make the real money to feed us, you know, yeah, in that yeah. sense, you yeah, know. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm just I came from a normal family. Uh, How many brothers? Yeah. How many sisters? I have one sister. I'm the second uh, in the sibling, and then I, uh, and then I have two younger brothers. So in a way, because I'm the second, I'm the the eldest son. Yeah. I somehow be, that that builds my character in a way, you know, right? because yeah. my father was away, my mother was away in a way every day. So I have to become the father, taking yeah. care of my sister and my two two younger brothers. Yeah, yeah. And that shapes me into someone who uh, can be seen as firm. Okay. <laughs> and independent you, know, yeah, yeah. you seem a bit um, older than your years you've got that that you've got a feeling where you know how when you meet someone yeah. they, you say they're 20 or but they seem 30 okay. or they seem 40 okay. you are I think 40 early 40s yeah. but you, your, your demeanor is a little bit like Older a bit lah, uh, okay. wiser a bit. Okay, but looks wise no, right? <laughs> looks wise no. You look you looks like twenty something lah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um, so what was it about your father was it inspirational? No, you see, um, to, uh, this is an op- it's open thing, right? So, you see, when people talk about policemen, why would people say corruption? Yeah. It's a serious issue anyway, yeah? yeah and yeah. it's a real issue. But my father, you see, when even when during my younger days, I've been observing him and I see my friend's parents, you know, we grew up together, right? So, I see him, why he always seems to have no money, you know? He doesn't drive luxury cars, doesn't have, we don't have a really good house or what. He always doesn't have money. So I always wonder why. And then one day when he retired and we had a chat, you know, so I, was, I, I, I asked him, hey, why the other uncles are this and you're here? I remember last time you were here, then here, you know, that kind of thing. And he shared a story. Lah. So you see, for him, number one, integrity. He doesn't take money. Okay. He would never do that, you know. It's his principle. And then at the same time, he also, would, what's not right is not right. So uh, those days when he was, uh, he, uh, he, his last post was Chief Traffic Kedah, you know. So, you know, those lorry hantu, yeah. those lorry shouldn't be on the highway. Okay. So he would say no, he would stop them and issue summonses. Okay. Although someone higher up would call and say, no, so you shouldn't uh, do that, uh, that kind uh, of thing. Uh, but yeah. he would still keep going on like that. 
So he he got in trouble in terms of works because of that. Okay. You know, so he's so what I'm trying to say is, for someone who has the opportunity to earn money and live easily, for earn what money have been through, funny, funny yeah, yeah, but he doesn't go through all those. He go through okay, never mind. I don't have money even now. You know, he has retired, but he doesn't have. But he yeah. well, he has me and my, my he has me lah to yeah. to help out. Yeah, yeah. but. He sleeps easy, you know. Yeah, you know that yeah. kind of thing. He sleeps with a peaceful yeah. mind. Yeah. So it, it. So in a way, why I say is inspiration because when I see him, if someone can do that, my father can do that integrity part. So why can't I be honest and have that integrity? So and in a way, that honesty and integrity helps me in my career. And that, so that, that's what I'm trying okay. to say here. You know? So that's most inspirational about about him. Not he, not the fact that he was always in the jungle and having a quite a um, active life and and all that. Because obviously, I I know you from your pursuits outside of the office. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I think in a way, in terms of blood, yeah. I have that. I think I got from him in terms of that. And of course, if you see him, his ear here, he his ear here was, uh. What do you call it? How do you call it? Cut and then sewn back, you know? Oh, so because of see. the communists. Yeah, because of one of the incident. That one is in Indonesia, one of the incident. And he nearly got... Uh, this one, it was in Sabah. There was operations there. Uh, unlucky for him, uh, he, at night, he was standing near the lights, the boat light. One swordfish f- just jumped out of the water. Holy moly. Next <laughs> to his heart, you know? So he so was lucky. So his way. chest? Yeah. Wow. So he got here, you know? So, But what I'm trying to say again, he, got, he goes through all that. But he just move on. Move on. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So then after that, what happened? You, you were you a scholarship guy? What did you study? Because I know you from Malaysia Airlines, but then yeah. previously you were a banker as well. Yeah. So if you talk about, well, I'm a late bloomer in a way also lah. Yeah. So um, uh, see what my parents when they, I don't know, they have this vision as well. You know. So when I was uh, in the primary school, they don't send me to the nearest school. Uh, in in Ulu Kinta, you know that time they sent me to La Salle because they know by sending me there, the the mix. You know when you send someone to school, you must make sure that the mix is right, not just okay. all Malay or all all kind of one thing. kind yeah, or all one kind lah. Yeah. So they sent me there. So uh, but from there, I, I I become different from a lot of people. And you know, in life, you must be different. Then only you can yeah, yeah. be somebody <laughs> yeah, in a way, right. you know. <laughs> yeah. Known for so, something like yeah. So yeah. So I was in La Salle, and then uh, I was lucky that uh, I got to go into Star uh, Sekolah Tuan Kod Rahman, okay. one of the top boarding school, the, the first nine boarding school in Malaysia actually. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was there for five years. That shapes me because I became more independent. So from thirteen, you are in boarding school. Yeah. Yeah. So and then after that. I did A, le- A levels in Banting, yeah. uh, and of course I went overseas uh, in right. UK. Yeah. What did you study? Uh, this is interesting by itself, you know. So we have time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> we got lots of time, bro. <laughs> so you see, the thing is, um, in during the 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 what they call this um, uh, secondary school time, I was doing accounting. So I love accounting. I can I can take it, lah. You know, yeah. I was good at it. But then uh, when A levels, I see all my friends doing accounting. Suddenly I say, "Hey, why everyone accounting? I don't also don't want to be accountant lah. Too many accountants." Yeah, yeah. So I did estate management. I choose. I change. You know, I estate applied estate management. Estate okay. management. Okay. Yeah. So something different. Different, right? Yeah, so yeah. people say, "What you want to jaga estate lah, or something like that, right?" <laughs> <laughs> there was a joke at that time lah. You know, but I'm different. So that's yeah. why again I shape myself as different. So I did estate management. Estate management is actually about property, yeah. property valuations. You learn about property management, etc. With something not. Many people know at that time, yeah. so that's what I did. Uh, and when I came back, it was unlucky. Nineteen ninety-eight, the economic crisis. So, and if you recall, at that time, there's no email. Email was just up and coming at that time. Of yeah. course, handphone was the Nokia banana star tech. Yeah, if you yeah, remember the big, all the those. big bloody uh, <laughs> yeah. Motorola, right? Yeah. So, so I have to. Uh, so, sending resumes basically, you have to literally print and and. You know, yeah. send via post everywhere. Yeah. So everywhere I go at that time, unfortunately, uh, when goes for interview, to go to the interview, there'll be people queuing up to get job because nineteen eighty was really bad. And uh, every time the interviewer will ask me, uh, "Why should I employ you? You have no experience." And I always got rejected. You know, 
until one day when I uh, I went up to JB I'm from Perak right and uh, up to Johor Bahru um, so I got this interview with Collius Collius uh, International yeah Collius Collius Jordan Lee and Jaffa the name was then so I remember the executive director himself interviewing me like this lah you know so he said why do why should I employ you you don't have no experience the standard question again then I say Mr Chin uh, his name is Mr Chin Kin Choi why not we do this uh, you pay me 800 ringgit uh, you take me if you find me good when you want to do you when you want to confirm me then we renegotiate my salary and of course immediately that was friday yeah. the monday i started working okay, because cause like overseas grad 800 ringgit come on what's to lose you know that kind of thing what was the <laughs> what was the starting salary then uh normally uh my 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 friends all 2000 1005 1008 okay. but so he's not, he's not known, cannot lose lah cannot lose you yeah. know <laughs> so yeah uh, uh i was there and yeah they they employed me and he's also clever lah he waited until six months lah pay 100 ringgit what then only he confirmed me right yeah so he's like thinking okay 70 percent discount right yeah <laughs> For six but months. that's how i got my job you that's know right. so that's, that's right. the thing that's where i started my career in yeah. a way and then I remember again, during the interview, the standard question again, uh, where do you see yourself in five years time? So then I said, N- not here. <laughs> and he was like, you're in interview, you <laughs> can answer. That it, yeah. <laughs> in, yeah. Then he asked why. And I said, I know this, this industry is, is too small, too saturated. Yeah. The first five years, I believe I would have learned everything. And then being in JB, I know I won't go anywhere after that. So I must move to KL. So, and right on the dot, uh, the fifth year, I moved to KL. I got a job on, on contract for one year, you know. From a permanent job, I moved to KL on contract for one year at a lesser income. I did that. But then again, I believe in life you have to sometimes up, then you take a step down to then move up again. So that's what I did. So I take, I joined Amanah Raya in KL for one year, contract. And then that's where my boss in CIMB identified me. Uh, the funny thing, we she was negotiating for CIMB. I was negotiating for Amanah Raya, and then uh, I was firm, was protecting my company's interest. That's always in me, you know. I was if I work for someone, I protect that the company's interest. So she was like, "Huh, who's this guy? Young guy, thirty lah, of course uh, but still the young guy. What? Ah, huh? don't want to budge, want to still maintain this rate, blah blah blah, you know. And suddenly he she realized that this is the person that should work with within her, her uh, with her company you know because protecting com- the company's interest you know so she hired you lah she hired me lah of course lah because that one under contract one year is yeah. finishing i asked hey, what ha- what's happening to me they don't know yet yeah then she hires of course like so cimb man cimb so this yeah. is what year this is uh, 2005 2005 this yeah. when uh, that was when Nazir was still there. Yeah, this was the time, the good time, because that the time... The money was good, the bonuses were good. Oh, yeah. You see, the thing is, CIMB at that time was 1,000 staff. It was still the investment bank, the uh, Commerce International Merchant Bank, it was called yeah, at that time. Yeah, just here like that. Yeah, no, behind no, here. No. So I was here until, uh, until 2014, 2013, yeah. before we moved to Central. So I got, I got in at the right time. So we were going up like this. So I can, I can say I was hugely involved in all those mergers acquisitions uh etc and and the path where we grow so yeah i'm proud to say that i was a cmb and and yeah okay <laughs> there, yeah. so um i think you did quite well um mm-hmm. and sometimes when people get to a certain point in the corporate ladder yeah they either find it too difficult to leave because the perks are too good money yeah, is too good yeah. ba secretary yeah. company car yeah bonus you know all the perks lah, privileges yeah. right yeah uh, and then some don't yeah you don't you didn't stick around yeah i didn't why you do was there something in the corporate world that didn't agree with you not really um you hit the right note you say money comfortable i was very comfortable there i got i got a room whatever uh, issues that come during the work it's like at my fingertips i know how to solve it so it's yeah. very comfortable life yeah. but it's not in me it's not me I just feel that if you are in comfort, if you are comfortable, that means you are not doing something. You are not challenging yeah. yourself, and you are not fulfilling what you should be. You know, <coughs> so that's why the word comes into play where you must step out from your comfort zone. Yeah. Then only you know what you yeah. can achieve. Actually, you know. Yeah. So yeah. in this case, I was very comfortable. So one day, 
It was nearing 40. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, maybe midlife crisis just <laughs> exists in a way. <laughs> But I was just, I just told my boss, it's time for me to go. So Did everyone, you have a plan? What was the backup plan? No, I didn't have a plan. No plan? You just said, okay, uh, too, life is too easy, you want to go? Yeah, life is too comfortable. I won't say life is too easy. Yeah, I have to think about all my all the mouths that I have to feed. Yeah. I got nine mouths to feed, including yeah. me at that time. Uh, but then again, like I say again, uh, when you're too comfortable, you must do something. So I was like, okay, I must go. So I just quit. And then, uh, of course, there was this ride, sh- uh, ride sharing uh, Uber. Uber at that time. Yeah, it was so still illegal. <laughs> so, yeah. so you, 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 yeah. Let me just go back, right? Yeah. You have nine mouths to feed. Yeah. Of which I presume a couple were your parents. Yeah. So, so, so how? Do you, I mean, most people would be shit scared, right? Yeah. That oh, my God, I can't leave. I, yeah, I can't yeah. because there's a salary. Yeah. And it's a good salary. Yeah. Bonuses. Bonuses, right? Company car, Company everything. Company car, yeah. So know. transport, car, team, insurance yeah. as well, right? Yeah. And they also take care of your family, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, that must have been a huge decision. It is a huge decision, but it, I don't know. I feel like, um, like I say again, you see, I'm the type where challenges doesn't bother me. If I feel like doing it, I'll just do it. Mm. That's me, you know. Uh, the other word that I always use is tiada alasan. Okay. Don't give too much reasons. Just okay. face it. Just make so, it happen. Yeah, just yeah. make it happen. So, yeah, I know about all this. Uh, yeah, I got nine months to feed, to feed and then whether... Uh, Where should I go after this? How how will I get money? That kind did of thing. Did you have you know? um, Did you have some savings? You know, of course you six must. Six months, right? Six months rule. Yeah, of, of course you must have savings, but at the same time you must adjust your life. Yeah. So this is something that you must be prepared. So I had a, I was driving a Beamer at that time. Then after that I don't have car. I'm your prepared to Your own Beamer or the company Beamer? Uh, it's a company Beamer. Yeah. But uh, yeah, company Beamer. But yeah. then again, from uh, you having a company Beamer. You don't have a, a car. No, no car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? And then you were somebody, you become... Not to say nobody, you no, become... No, yeah, for sure. You are identified yeah? by a yeah. position, right? Yeah. Once you leave a job, you're yeah. nobody. Yeah. And then you have to adjust re- your life, like... Yeah. The astro thing, all those... Yeah. You cut. see all those, yeah, the nice to have, then you cut. Mm. You know, sometimes you have to do that. But actually, it's a good thing. When you cut, you feel like you're going to miss it, but actually you don't, you know? You yeah, can you don't, adjust yeah. your life actually, yeah. and it gives you more time to go and achieve your other dreams. Yeah, this is what yeah. you need to do. You know. <laughs> so basically, did your did your children say, "Hey, Dad, what are you doing?" Or did your wife say, "Hey, what are you doing?" How how did you overcome the, uh, or did you just bulldoze the way through? I just bulldoze. Um, in my life, I have a principle where nobody controls my life. Okay. Even from even my mum, you just. My dad, then he knows. They, they know. know. They yeah. know. Yeah. So I control my life. I feel that in life, you must not be dependent on anyone. You must be you dependent on your own. I'm not being arrogant here. No, but and you live or die by your yeah. decision. Yeah. If you succeed, okay, good. Yes. If you fail, it's yeah. your fault. Yeah. Make it happen again. Yeah. yeah. So of course you have to think about ensuring that these people that you are taking care of, they have a nice life, uh, a comfortable life, that kind of thing. They are well taken care of. That's why I said I have to go and do Uber. And then do hammocks. I sell hammocks, and then I do uh, rafting guides. I do a lot of things to earn some money to yeah. to yeah, cover that right here and there, you know that kind of thing. Yeah, but that's a nice break because yeah. during that thing suddenly you can, uh, how do you say, uh, look at life differently, different angle. So you imagine driving Uber. You see all people, all kind of people. Some ego, some very friendly. You were like, uh, I was there. You know, do you know? That? But of course you so don't, don't want say, to tell. Yeah. Don't say, yeah. but it's like. Then mind is controlling. Then it's a uh, it's a good personal development, self development. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. So at this time, were you already traveling? Were you exploring? Were you going around the world? I started traveling. Uh, like I say, I was late. So it it happens when I was thirty again, thirty thirty one. Yeah. Uh, I have this fear of water. <laughs> so you overcame it. Yeah, I overcame it doing rafting. I yeah. think uh, you might have read it somewhere. So that opens up a new world to me. So actually, when during my younger days, I love uh, the jungle, everything, but I never got the chance. So um, during A levels, I only went to two mountains, uh, Mount Ledang and Mount Corbu, on my own with my few few of our friends. That's all, you know. Then there's no outdoor life until I was thirty. Suddenly, I that 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 incident where I uh, that 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 event where I go and fight my fear. Yeah. So it opens up. When I when I went to uh, to do that rafting, what I observe is there's no Malay guides. 
They are all orang asli, the oh. native guides, you know. And this then is in Koping, is it? In no, in Kuala Kubu. Koping, there okay, are a lot of Malay. In okay. KKB, no, you know. So it's mostly all the the orang asli. So I feel like this is cool. This is something that's again being different. Nobody does that. Why not I do it? So yeah. So I pursue learning to be a guide. So to be a white water rafting guide for a non swimmer, for someone who are scared of water. And for it's someone, really scary, man. If yeah. you fall in, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for joke. someone who's not orang asli yeah. at that time, it was very tough, you know. Yeah. So, the scared of water part somehow I just bulldoze. But the orang asli was at that time wasn't that welcoming. They were like, "You are trying to steal my body of yeah. you know that yeah. kind of thing, you know. So whenever I, you see, you can only learn on the job. Rafting, yeah. you know. Yeah. So when you go rafting, you need to learn how to read water, etc. When you ask them, hey, how this one? They say, no, don't. You do lah, you do lah. So every time like that, and every time you come, they will. Uh, they you see uh, in Malaysia in in our river is creek running river, so you have two guides, one at the back, one at the front. So nobody wants to partner me at that time. So you feel isolated, etc. Yeah, But then again, yeah. you have to persevere through that, and yeah. finally, I managed to blend in. I became them. In a way, yeah, became them lah. Became them. Then from there, I became a guide, and start people start knows to knows me, and that opens up the outdoor world to me, and I believe that helps when when the Fjord Raven thing as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Fjord Raven was this. Um, it used to be like a small. It's like a race, right? But it's it's but it's only for locals, I think, right? Uh, it's only for local um, people who live there. Yeah. Then I think some years ago they opened it up to the world. Yeah. Then it, I think twenty spots. Yeah. Um, the bigger countries got two spots. I think UK got two spots. Yeah. And then Malaysia was on inside the Asia, Asia Oceania. Oceania. Yeah. 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 And then only got one spot. Yeah. So what happened? That's the big one, right? That's the big one. Actually, yeah. actually, um, uh, the race is normally held in Alaska. So this one guy, the Fia Raven guy, uh, the owner, he feels that why not he give the chance to normal people from all over the world so you see normal people you know not the real yeah, <laughs> outdoor guys yeah, yeah. so and and yeah they open up 20 spots so i was competing in the asia oceana region to be selected so the way how you get it is by voting that's all you know so they must uh, like your look lah or, or your your background lah actually the voting is by everyone yeah. because it's by uh, facebook yeah so uh, in there at that time was china and uh, vietnam uh, singapore uh, all those countries you know and malaysia etc so i was like when i saw the advert in the instagram immediately i feel like hey i must apply this at that time you see again uh, Fia Raven is dog slap. So again, if you are someone negative, someone you say, oh, I'm a Muslim, dogs yeah. Yeah. don't, you know. Yeah. So for yeah. me, no, 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 this is my chance. Yeah. Because this is my chance to number one, go to the Arctic. <laughs> First of all. Yeah. Well, so they pay for expenses. Everything, you know. Oh, that's fantastic. Everything, yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So this is my chance to do that. At the same time, this is my chance to open up to the world to, to see that actually my religion doesn't actually stop us mixing with dogs there are rules yeah. and grounds but actually it's not you know so that's yeah. another topic to it lah you know I yeah, read that you actually approached the Mufti and oh Mufti yeah. said he's actually quite like, apparently he was excited excited yeah you see why our prophet encouraged us to travel yeah. those days people say uh, he he used to say our prophet belajarlah sampai ke negeri China Uh, you know, because from Middle East, go there, you know, that, can, that means travel and learn. So yeah. when the Mufti heard that I'm going to Arctic and do this, uh, you know, he says, yeah, this is, this fits what the Prophet's teaching is, you know. And then you go learn and then give back to society. Yeah. So I went there. Now I'm going to the second part, giving back to society. So, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what was that like? Because uh, obviously we don't live in a cold country, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's minus like 25, minus 40. Uh, there was a point that it was minus 35. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can't prepare for it. So it's how many, how many kilometers? Uh, 300 kilometers. Okay. Uh, and on the dog sled? On the dog sled. 10 sled, 10 dogs? Uh, six dogs. Six dogs. Six dogs, yeah. And they don't know you, you don't know them. So you have yeah. to build a relationship with the dogs. Yeah. yeah. So and then they'll fight, right? They will fight. No, actually they're not. They won't fight. You see, um, my trainer there, the marshal, says that He says that uh, huskies are stupid dogs. This, that's, what, that's his use, uh, his word, lah. You know, huskies are actually athlete, uh, athletes. They just want to run. They run. Yeah. They just run. You yeah. know. So 
amongst the six there's one leader so they just follow the leader that's them so they don't really fight yeah they just follow so you okay. just need to know to manage the leader then you can manage i see yeah I of see. course all those six okay all the way throughout the journey is you and the dog although you have the 20 participants but actually you don't see them right yeah it's all spread out yeah except that in the tent we are together lah okay. one tent for uh, you do the, 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 the points lah right the meeting points yeah so okay. what how they did is they split us into five groups so four groups together slept and then uh, four 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 follow like that lah yeah and uh, and one person uh, one ten two person so it's uh, your you and uh, like me is with my australian mate uh, jordan uh, so but in terms of managing the dogs everything is you and the dogs so the from the point you arrive i remember the the master said hey, go and take your dog that other one and go with uh fix them to the harness. It was like, uh, I've never <laughs> even <laughs> hold dogs. I don't know what to do with dogs. Yeah. Everything. They say, no, just go and take and, and make it happen. Make yeah. it happen. Yeah. So again, yeah, make it happen. And then the first day was the toughest, to be honest, because you have to sled climbing the hill, the mountain, actually, you know. So eight hours journey climbing the mountain. And uh, it's very tiring because climbing, you have to help push the dog. Yeah, you have to push from behind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you are adjusting to the the weather, the the climate, everything you know from <laughs> yeah. Malaysia, that is totally different. Yeah, yeah. And then you are wearing at some points you are wearing six layer of clothing. Yeah, yeah. So it's very you become very uh, yeah, huge, right? And <laughs> huge. you're not more mobile. Yeah, not yeah. mobile. And then very tiring, you know. Uh, and the best part was, uh, I remember was doing it. Then the uh, there's a point where we have to stop for lunch. So I saw one small hut. So I was like happy. Wow, we reach here. There's foods waiting for us. Yeah. So I say, okay, you can take your food and eat yourself on your own. You must not leave the dog sled. Yeah. So literally, you sit there. You have to cook your food or take whatever foods you have in the in the yeah, yeah. in the sled. I was un- unprepared at that time. I w- I wasn't. I didn't know that it was that way. So my knife was hidden somewhere in the sled. So you can't really find it, yeah. and then I I literally just ate some chocolates. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's like crazy, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, of course you have to take care of the dogs. Yeah. yeah you serve them foods, everything, yeah. and then you continue. So what happened is when you reach the campsite, the first thing that you need to do is manage the dogs, not you, you know. Mm. Dogs so first. Dogs first. So after going through, and the first day itself, we faced the snowstorm. My first snowstorm. It was crazy, you know. So it was sledding, it was cool, uh, and then suddenly you can see it's like, like the raining, the the, the rain clouds is coming, yeah. coming. It's like, oh, oh you know, oh, but it just, you know, <laughs> you it's just it's already coming. cool, you know, and yeah. yeah, but you just go through it. You just, I don't know, just go through it, yeah. and yeah, when we reach the campsite, I have to cook for the dog. We have to boil water, just b- boil water for the dogs first, build their shelter, move them for the lines. Then only you can build your tent. Incredible. It's very tiring, really. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. So after that, you. What was the biggest trip you had made before the Arctic? Biggest trip in yeah. in what sense? Normally I go backpacking Indonesia, okay, of so course, Indonesia, Mongolia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah luckily yeah. I went to Mongolia. Two thousand. 15 yeah. so it helps in a way because it was cold there as well do you do solo yeah. or do you go with other people normally what I do is I want to go I just tell people I want to go whoever wants to follow follow they follow my just, timing or you just, just go by yourself yeah. yeah like Mongolia Mongolia two ladies follow me Indonesia sometimes it's just me sometimes there will be one or two following me yeah, yeah. so I like I like the traveling that you do because mm. it's not you know when people say oh I'm going to go on a holiday I'm going to go traveling they'll say mm. then I'll ask where you're going to go then they'll say oh Hong Kong or London yeah, then what are you going to do? We're going to go shopping. We're going to watch a play in London, go to whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Soho. Okay. <laughs> to me, that's not traveling. That's not life. That's not life. <laughs> traveling to me, it's yeah. like, I like what you do because yeah. you go and you go to Indonesia, but you don't, you don't go to Bali. You go to like Sulawesi, right? Yeah, yeah. And you don't go by plane. You recruit. This one I'm going to do, right? Yeah. Uh, rent a motorcycle, but yeah. not the Harley Davidson, Kap Chai. Kap Chai, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That to me, is the essence of traveling. Yeah. Or on foot or on a bus yeah. and you go and see the world. Yeah. Mongolia. Okay, let's do Mongolia first. Yeah. Where did you go and how did you do it? It was 2015, uh, September. It was uh, at the border between autumn and winter. Yeah. So I went there. I got the contact from uh, one of my uh, internet friends. Yeah. So I just went there and I just uh, contact that guy there. 
and I just arrange myself and we go. So along the way, we change all the routes. But you see, the the good thing when you go backpacking, you can choose to stay where longer, do what longer, that kind of thing, lah. You know. So yeah, yeah. it was a we went to West Mongolia. Uh, it's near next to Kazakh border. Uh, so it's like up uh, at the top is Russia, down there China, then Kazakh. So yeah. that's one point where I was standing. I can see the three, three countries. countries. So, you know, oh, it was very amazing, nice. Yeah. Amazing. And you live with the nomads. Okay, cool. So, in the yurts, lah. Yeah. Uh, the, so what happened is um, I live with three different families. So the first few day with this family at the Altai Mountains, and then when I've done the mountains, then we move to the other part where. We do the real nomads thing. So because it was uh, already going to winter, so all the nomads are going to their permanent house. They call it winter house. So what happened was uh, it was fun. Suddenly one day they say, "Rizal, do you want to ride uh, horse, horses? Horse, you know?" So I said, "Yeah." So they bring in three horses, you know, and these are semi wild horses. That means when they don't use, they just uh, let release them, go, yeah. let them yeah. go. You know, when they want, they just go and catch and bring. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay. I never experienced riding horses. I don't know how to control them. So, they just, okay, put me on one of the horses. And then there were two ladies. So, they, the, the Mongolian guys take care of them more, like, you know, like ladies against yeah, yeah. one guy. Yeah, yeah. You know? So, okay, then go. So, I was like, hey, hey how, how do I move? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and then they told me, if you want to move, you just do like the cowboy one. Yeah, yeah, you know, the, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, if you want them to turn right, just pull the, 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 the thing to the right, the head, yeah. left. Yeah. Left or you want to stop, just pull up. Yeah, yeah. Then you just go, you know. Bit, it's a like, bit scary, right? Because it's quite high up the ground. Yeah, and then suddenly it goes into your mind. Well, what happened to fall? Remember that Clark Kent guy, yeah, the Clark Superman Kent, guy, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I was like, all this running away. But then, then again, I said, why think negative? You yeah. should always think positive. Then you enjoy, you know. Yeah. So <laughs> this is something you need to know. You know, you must always have the capability of removing that negativity yeah. part. Just focus on the the good things you know then you'll enjoy yeah so that's what i did so we were riding then suddenly there was a a, a bunch of all these uh sheep uh yaks cows everything uh, migrating yeah. uh, because of the family migrating so uh, my guide say hey, do you want to become the the what the pengembala in english uh, the ship sh- the shepherd the shepherd yeah. yeah so they want to say yeah why not yeah do. so we did that we yeah. just go and did it was very fun you know you just do and it was like you you are you you are an expert on it. I have videos of it. So your buddy, you, so that's quite unusual. Nobody yeah. really goes to Mongolia. Yeah. Nobody really went to Kapcha in Indonesia, mm-hmm. right? Because they think you're crazy, so yeah. dangerous, right? Yeah. You're so your buddies from your classmates or your ex colleagues. Yeah. Your when your ex colleagues look at you now, they think, oh my god, that's that's the guy we used to know from CMB. Look at what he's doing now. Yeah. <laughs> Do they do that? Yeah, a lot of people, even even my schoolmates. You see, when I was in Star Ipoh boarding school. I wasn't a sportsman. I can, I play sports, but I wasn't representing school. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't the champion, school champion, that kind of thing, you know. But now this, this my my buddies, they all look me as someone they idolize in a way. Oh. Even a lot of Siamians who call me idola, you idola. Made the leap, right? Yeah, you did what they all shit scared of doing, yes, right? That's the thing. They all know? dream of doing something else because yeah. they're stuck to this office. Yeah, they're stuck to the machine. They're stuck yeah. to the boss, and the boss. You know, yeah. right? Yeah, and they just stuck. They don't. They're they are afraid to go out and take the risk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what it's all about. You know, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are the life lessons? You only f- okay. So, I think life lessons can be um, given by anybody at any age yep. if you really learn them, right? Yeah. So, this point of life, mm. and you know, you're about ten years younger than Yusuf when you retired. Yusuf Hashim. Oh, yeah. He's another yeah. guy, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 He to me, he's like. Oh yeah. He's, he's done it. Yes. Been there, done it, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So what are the life lessons now? If you are advising a 31 year old guy mm-hmm. to be the best you can be, yeah. to make the most of your life, yeah. what would they be? Five things. Okay, uh, there must be work-life balance. There must be. Because, you see, I, when I was uh, in CIMB, I used to sometimes not, don't even go home. Yeah. Weekends so work. But then, that's a, that's a real turning point. That's one incident. My colleague passed away because of cancer. One month after oh. knowing, she, he was 34, 35 at that time. Cancer. Cancer, Gosh, yeah. liver cancer. And when he discovered, it's already stage four. So, so what was the cause? I don't know. He just have that liver was cancer. Was eating or hereditary? Or? I know he smokes a lot, I was saying, but it's also hereditary in a way, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So what happened was, one month after he discovered, he passed away. So I look one at that. One month? One Gosh. month, you know. So I look at that and I say, look, you can go and work 
don't even sleep in the office everything but when you die you when you die you die you just all those is yeah, gone you yeah. know yeah like so when when people on the deathbed and nurses have said you know um when they talk to people about the dying they mm. ask you what is the biggest regret they'll never say oh i should have worked more or i should have earned more money no they never no, do that right yeah. they would have said i wish i travel more yeah. i wish i spend more time with my yeah. children yeah. i wish i'd seen the world yeah. right yeah So they never say that we should work more money. Yeah. Well, yeah. well you yeah. can never have enough money. Yeah. If you think that way, one billion, then you have to want two billion, and then yeah. what else after yeah. that? So yeah, so that's why the work-life balance is must is a must for me, because I'm I, I'm I'm okay. Because you see, when you go out, you work, you go out, then when you you come back, you become more productive, you recharge. Yeah. So work-life balance is one. Okay. Uh, number two, integrity. For me, what in whatever you do, you must have integrity. That's how I grew in my career. I really grew in my career because everyone, my bosses, all trust me. They trust me. I can handle big projects. I won't go even take single cents. I can be rich yeah. if I do that, but yeah. I won't. There's I there's a lot of scope for, for. Yeah. A lot of funny funny things, right? Oh in yeah. This yeah, yeah. Being in my line, of course. Yeah. What do you, why do you think people nowadays? Mm-hmm. Are so willing to cut corners and 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 take money. Do you have a theory about that? I Was it because they just is is money, right? They want to buy things. I think one of the things is, of course, nowadays everything you can see social media, everything. So it it makes like, uh, going traveling or having GoPro, iPhone, blah blah, becomes. If you don't have that, you are seen to be <laughs> nobody, less worthy, you know, less right? worthy. Yeah. You know. So sometimes. Or, or you can see someone is already up here and you're still here, so it become a peer peer pressure that yeah, kind of thing, yeah, you know. Yeah. And because of social media, everything you can see exaggerated. Because, yeah, so so that that itself is a challenge for this generation. Not many yeah. people can bring themselves down. Yeah, right. You yeah. Ca- it's like for for you, mm. you're like a director at CIMB. Yeah. And then you went from that to being an Uber driver, yeah. and you didn't ca- you didn't care. Yeah. Not many people can do that. Yeah. But if you are able to do that able to take that risk willing to take that risk you don't worry you can yeah, suddenly don't be go afraid there. right yeah don't be afraid so like me it was i was there then from there i go up again and i and i got my present job now which is yeah. i'm happy i got the chance to help uh, the company uh, and then of course i got this fear revenue yeah so yeah. Uh, that's an achievement right yeah i wouldn't change whatever i did before seriously yeah. you know okay yeah. so work life balance yeah uh, uh be a person of integrity yeah What's number three? There are the alasan, the one that I mentioned you just now. Yeah. Just don't, just, just, uh, just, just do don't it. give too much reason. Just do yeah, it. That's why Nike also. Don't just think do too it. hard. Don't think too hard. Ah, and like Nike, like just do it, right? Yeah. Analysis paralysis. Yeah. You think too hard, paralyzed cannot do. Yeah. Don't look at the negative side. Try focus more on the positive. Mm. You know, when you have problems, why cry about the problem? You can cry. Then you think about the solution. That's all. Yeah. Put more effort there. So, okay, tiada alasan. Tiada lah. alasan. Okay. Fourth one four. is, don't forget your parents. You know, they they, I'm sure one day you have kids, right? Uh, one day if you have, you know how hard, how difficult to, be a parent. <laughs> yeah, to yeah. be a parent. So don't forget them and never ever for me, yeah, never ever uh, feel. Uh, what's the right word? Uh, don't be stingy to them. You know, if they need something, give. You no, know, just. Give. How do you how do you give to your parents now? Okay, you see, a bit of allowance is one thing, right? I'm sorry. Um, allowance and income. Okay, and yeah. So, yeah. you remember I said just now uh, my first job was eight hundred ringgit, but the take home, of course, minus tax, everything is seven hundred yeah. minus the EPF etc. And I was renting in JB alone. Nothing so left basically, over I got. About five hundred ringgit left, then two hundred ringgit I give to them at that time. Then might become three hundred uh, minus three hundred the rental, the transport everything. So most of the time I survive with Maggie those days. But from the first day I was employed until now, even until during the period where I didn't work, every month they get money from me. So that's why I say again, you must always give. Back to your parents, mm. not they, not that they, they <coughs> yearn for it. What, but that that's your way of giving back. You can never be able to to give back or to to what's what's the word to 
to repay them, you know. You can Info, never, there's no way, yeah. There's no way, but that's one way, you see. Give back to them, you know. So that's my fourth, I think. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then number five? Five. <laughs> I already said live life, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just make it happen, lah. Just yeah. make it happen. Yeah. I don't know the fifth one. I don't have too many. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have too many. I don't know. Uh, be prepared to walk away. Be prepared to walk away. That's why, if you remember, I said I don't let people control my life. Be prepared to walk away in anything. So if even if uh, doing your work, if you know it's not right, principally. You feel that it's not right. Be prepared to walk away. Not doing the right thing. Yeah. Right? So oh. be prepared. You know, if even if it costs you to lose your job, but you know that you are doing the right thing. You know, but of course you must make sure you know what you're doing, lah. You know, so be prepared to walk away in anything. Yeah. So in all this, um, mm. I ask I ask other people this: yeah. people who do a lot of traveling and exploring, because it can be quite an expensive pursuit. Mm. And it can be quite a, a time-consuming pursuit. Yeah. So it's time away from your children. Yeah. It's time away from your family. Yeah. And it's money spent. It's not cheap. Even yeah. if you go budget, it's still a flight and all kinds of things. Yeah. How do you do it? No, actually, um, number one, when you talk about time, you must uh, know the right timing to go. Lah. And mm. that's why if you see the uh, most people go traveling during end of the year. So why, why do you go at that time? It will be very expensive, and then if you go Europe, very cold, yeah. or everything will be expensive. Flights, everything. So you time it in different way. Like me, I normally I will go somewhere in May, uh, and then in early part of uh, or the end part of November. Normally people okay. go to December. Off season, so Off season. Okay. You yeah. try get that off season, and of course you combine your leave when you're working. Try combine your leave. Don't take too much one day, two day leave. Just combine it. And then uh, I'm presuming your kids are still quite young, right? Yeah, uh, I got, I got two who recently uh, uh, got their result SPM. Yeah. Okay. So I got two. Okay. I got a twin son. Uh, they, one of them hopefully will achieve my dream to be a pilot. Okay. Yeah, hopefully. You want going. them to be a pilot? I wanted to, but I have color blind, so I can't do that. I see. So from <laughs> younger days, I know already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so traffic light, how how do you do it? The traffic light. I can see lah. Actually, that's what one thing you know. <laughs> People say, what what color is this? What color is? This? I can <laughs> say this is red. That one blue. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that that topic, you know. <laughs> but anyway, so I got uh, the eighteen years old, and then the youngest is four years old. So wow, somehow four, they are okay. used for me not to be in the house. But who takes care of them when you're not around? The maid. Okay. The maid, the mom is there. Okay. Okay. Anyway, okay. Yeah. So you see, um, uh, you must be there during the important time. Quality time lah. Mm. You don't know. You must not always be there all the time. But when you are there, then you play with them, mm. bring them up. You know, and then uh, their graduation, their what. You must be there at that point. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it's yeah. Do you have a um? Because your kids are quite your your, especially your two older sons, right? They yeah. Are, what was it? Sixteen, seventeen, already. Both are eighteen. Eighteen, right? Yeah. So they can go on trips with you already. You Unfortunately, they don't carry that blood. <laughs> oh really? Okay, because that's one of the things that I do. I bring yeah. my kids everywhere I go, like into the jungle, we rough camp, and Game. that's the thing. No, but they are they are at boarding school. They they are in in they grew up in boarding school. Does that bother so you? Because you see, yeah, one of the reasons why I chose to mm-hmm. you know to, to yeah. ask you to come and chat was because yeah. I think that too many young kids, yeah. even people my age, yeah. too much of this. Yeah. Too much of this. Yeah. Too many malls. Too many computer games, yeah. and they're not all there. Yeah. Does it irk you that your own kid okay, is like two, into game? Okay, that too bothers me. Yeah. But I'm lucky that I got another three, and those three really love. They even ask me, "Aba, when you want to go camping?" Yeah. They still play games. That one you can yeah, run away from. But the from. balance must be there. The balance must be there. So they, Aba, bila nak pergi camping? When? 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 Even the the th- uh, four years old, three turning four, you know? yeah, yeah. she already know about camping. What camping? I want to follow. I want to follow that kind of thing. Yeah. So the, uh, the the two girls and the other guy, the other son. So the the, the first two, yeah, <laughs> too late. Yeah. Oh, you think so? <laughs> cannot late. cannot cycle them anymore. Cannot right? anymore. Yeah, when you are at certain age, <laughs> yeah, yeah. let them live their life in that sense. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. at least I got another three too. <laughs> yeah, but and I I, I like I, I love what you're trying to do. Yeah. We should encourage those younger generations. Yeah, hopefully by to, talking to someone yeah, like you yeah. and people like you, yeah. you can inspire people and tell them that there's a world out there. It's not yeah. just 
yeah. bloody Fortnite, you yeah. know, not just bloody uh, Netflix or whatever. Yeah, and it's it's all it's also for Asians because yeah. we always see Mat Saleh is doing this. Always, it's always. Actually, for Asians. Th- that well, is yeah. one of the rules of my podcast. Yeah, my do more podcast. This one. Yeah, I will not talk to anyone who is not Asian. Yeah, I want to show them in this world that there's people doing outstanding things yes. that are not from always America or UK mm-hmm. or Australia no yeah, yeah, no yeah. I will not talk to yeah. anyone other than Asian people yeah because <laughs> we are more so, than capable yes we have we have a lot of people doing all those what Mat do that it's yeah, just yeah. that people don't really see it yeah, we yeah. have a lot yeah. so tell me about writing in uh, Indonesia because mm-hmm. a lot of people say it's it's too dangerous right mm-hmm. too dangerous too yeah, risky yeah yeah tell Not me about really. it because you 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 go there you buy a motorbike or you rent a motorbike uh rent a motorbike because what, what i'm trying to do is uh, uh i'm going to uh cover sumatra yeah that one i got the advice from one of the locals go to jakarta buy a bike new one then from there uh, right to lampung to the east side then cross the bridge yeah then go up sumatra Then you travel all the way up to Aceh, then turn back to Medan, yep. then sell your bike there. Yes. Even when selling your bike there, you might get it the the, uh, the price. Yeah. Is the same. About the same. A yeah. lot of people do that in yeah. in Vietnam, Vietnam as well. Yep. They they fly in Hanoi, they buy yeah. there second hand yeah. yeah. And then they ride it down to Da Nang or yeah. or Saigon, and then yeah. they sell it there. Yeah. Or you go the other direction, Saigon up to Hanoi, yeah. and they sell it there, right? Yeah. I want to do uh, uh, Sumatra. Uh, All the way across to uh, Sulawesi. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Is that something that you have ever considered? Um, timing. Okay. So it's a long time, right? It's a long time. You so about two months. Yeah, that's why I always break my travel. So um, I love to combine the traveling mode. So not always on the bike that kind of thing. Okay. You know? okay. So like the, the 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 one that I did in 2015 is a combination of flights, uh, ferry. Uh, train, buses, public buses, becha, angkor, all those things. Yeah, you know? Sometimes yeah, it's more yeah. fun. So, yeah, yeah. so actually, if you ask me, Indonesia, you don't need to. Uh, it's more fun doing uh, uh, what they call this island by island. Yeah. Because even at one island, it's already too huge. Yeah. And if you are, if you are, if you plan two months to cover all, basically mm. you are rushing. That's right. And Then I, do, I hate enjoy. the rush. I hate. Yeah. You you won't enjoy. It. So Sumatra itself, you need a good, I think, two weeks at yeah, least. Yeah. Yeah. So you start from down. Uh, and Sumatra, the even the, the top half is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. The Aceh part, and yeah. then if if you go uh, uh, the Bukit Tinggi side, that's called Kelop 44. Yeah. Try Google. The cornering is yeah. very crazy. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So in, if you you talk about dangerous, actually no, there are a lot of motorcycles. Yes, but you are riding. Normally they call it matic. The yeah. the scooters. It's actually. It's everybody. Everybody's on one, right? Uh, it's it's safe, you know. Actually, you rarely see accident there, you know, as compared okay. to Malaysia. Okay. okay. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you know, like in Vietnam, when you go there, oh, and you yeah. fly in Ho Chi Minh. Oh. My God, it's like about a million bikes on the road. But mm. everybody, you they'll say when you cross the road, yeah. you don't care, you just cross. Yeah. And then the the, <laughs> the bikes will just <laughs> pass around you. It's, it's uncanny. Yeah. I've never. Yeah. I was so shit scared when I did yeah. that, man. But yeah. it's like, yeah, it's fine. No, yeah. I didn't get touched also. Yeah. So <laughs> do that. I I think Indonesia is a nice place to go yeah. doing all this off beaten path thingy or or different kind of thing yeah. because. The foods are plenty, of foods course, amazing, right? and then the accommodation and people are friendly. You know, yeah. sometimes I sleep at people's house. Yeah, you just do that. Were you solo or were you with a group? Ah, uh, solo also. Solo. Yeah, because they are friendly. You see, you must know how to blend in. Number one, of course, yeah. when the rules of traveling, you don't go and show off, lah. Yeah, lah. And number Normal two, you, yeah. you you become humble and you become friendly, and you I'm sure you can. Yeah. So yeah, uh, they love they love uh, visitors actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so, do you do you plan the trip or do you just ride and then you ride until you stop and then you're like okay let's find a place to stay. Uh, What's the? Uh, I know when when the where is the end point that I want to okay. go because I will gain the lift because I'm working right. So along the way is deciding where to stop more or that kind of thing. I see. Because everyone has different interests right. So this place may be interesting to me if I want to stay longer I stay longer that kind of thing. I don't like to rush like yeah. I told you just now. Yeah, a bunch yeah. of friends of mine are trying yeah. to do the Karakoram highway. Uh-huh. Karakoram, uh, yeah. On bicycle, right? Okay. But they want to do speed. I'm like uh, 
you want to enjoy it. Yeah, because yeah. you don't you don't get to feel, you know. Yes. And and okay, yeah, bicycle, yes, unsupported, fine. Yeah. But they want to go speed. So they're talking about record and this and that and this couple did it in this long. And I'm like, I'm not sure I'm going to, you know, he, he doesn't know yet, so sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, right? Yeah, there's, I'm there's not talking. Okay. Always this saying, traveling is about the journey, not the destination. It's about the journey. Right? Yeah, so yeah. why do you want to rush? You should yeah. enjoy the journey. Yeah. Relax, meet more people. Yeah, you know, I, I don't believe in uh, going too fast, trying to be the fastest or whatever. You know, you just want to enjoy, get the experience. You know, you 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 cherish more. Basically. So, what's the next big trip for you? I really, really, really want to go to the South Pole trekking. I really, really want to do Dude, that. That's going to be a expensive. Yeah, and that's be okay. huge to organize. Yeah, the the. Again, uh, the huge part is something that I'm willing to face it, lah. You know, and the risk. Yeah. But the expensive part, yeah, that's yeah, the one. Huge. I don't know where this one. <laughs> yeah. The flight alone will kill you. Oh man. yeah. Actually, uh, in total, it will be about seventy thousand US dollar for the whole thing. So, yeah, I'm not the type of going to get sponsors and things. So I don't yeah. know, but yeah. but we must always dream. So this is my dream. Yeah. My next dream. I want to do this, whether it happens or not. We never know. Who knows? One day I sit next to you, uh, in front of you again, telling about that, that journey. <laughs> you never know. Day, right? You never know, right? Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Um, you've also become a bit of a, like a, you give talks to young people. Oh yeah. Um, I guess because you're on social media now, you've been mm. newspapers write about you and. Yeah. Mm. Um, what is the message? You go the, to school, so you go to we- to schools on weekends, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, chasing dreams. What you see the the story about me is I'm just a normal guy, uh, coming from not well to do family, but I've done things that many people just dream of. But the the key is I'm a normal guy, normal kampung guy. How can I how can I became what I am today? So my 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 talks is all about inspiring them to just go out and chase their dream. And the feedback that I always receive is. They love it because they can relate to it. It's just a story, you know. It's not like go motivation, you shout yeah, them. Yeah. It's just a story yeah. which people, a lot of people can relate. So that's my topic actually. Yeah, and the kids are like how old? 10, 15, 20 years uh, old? Secondary school mostly. But there was one school, that there was primary school. Oh, two school, primary school. But they were really locked at the front of the they're all like that, all right? like that. Oh, <laughs> and then after that of course bring one autograph that kind of thing. I was like oh, I'm not a celebrity but yeah, yeah but yeah. they really idolize you and they really really and the best part is whenever I give talks it uh, uh, it inspires I remember that the, the talk in, in, in uh, Pedas there was this 58 or 60 years old uncle oh Riza now uncle nak pergi travel uncle I want to do my things. You it's know. never so, too old. Yeah, so it inspires yeah, all, all age, you know. Yeah. Seriously. You know. <laughs> yeah. What is your definition of success? Oh, my definition of success? Uh, uh, number one, you don't live menyusahkan orang. <laughs> that means you're successful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, as in, as in, as in uh, you, don't, you, don't hurt, you don't harm anyone? Menyusahkan means you can live without... Uh, Asking people to help you, okay, you know, yeah, I okay. need money from you, or can you help me this, that, you know, you can live on your own, or you can take care of your, your dependents, everything, without having too much trouble doing it. Yeah. And then, of course, when you can give back, until you reach a point where you can't give back, you're not successful. You, like, like what we talked about just now, you can have a lot of money, the money will never be enough, but until you are willing to part with part of your money or what yeah, to give yeah. back to or society your time now, right? uh, or your time not just using money through yeah, time yeah. until you are able to do that you are not successful so that's my real definition of success actually. okay yeah. okay, that's true that's, yeah. that's a big thing um, because I think a lot of people they, they equate success with mm-hmm. money and yeah, status yeah. And, and that's where the problem will start yeah. yeah they don't realize that uh, time for yourself time to exercise or to oh, work yeah. out or to go traveling is, is wealth yeah they don't realize that seeing the world is wealth, yeah. right? And uh, they don't realize that um, sometimes if you you got to make those decisions because a lot of them are too afraid to come out. Yeah. 
No, the word the word is too small for me. I disagree because you ha- wouldn't have enough time to go and explore. Yeah, <laughs> the world yeah. you wouldn't. Yeah. The world is huge. <laughs> so uh, if the South Pole doesn't happen, okay. Or what's Plan B? What else? Uh, I'll say, I I don't know. I just see what what yeah. comes into play. You see, nowadays I've changed my game in a way. Suddenly, if something pops and I feel in- interesting, I'll just just go. Just go. Yeah. So the ultimate now is South Pole, but along the way there could be something else. Do you, you see know? yourself all, always still being in the corporate world and and you know traveling um, based on how much leave you got, or do you think there'll come a time when you leave the corporate world and you try and make a living that is related to or is connected with your love of traveling? I hope by fifty I can leave the corporate world. Okay. I hope, but then again we see how it goes, lah. You know so. Um, I have uh, received a lot of requests. People ask me to bring their kids yeah. going backpacking, and they pay me. You know, okay, because okay. it's Trips. like exposing yeah. their kids. Okay, that's to, interesting. To all this thing, you know. So, I'm thinking about that, but at the same time, I w- I just want to make sure, you know, I have the the other three kids that are in the education stage. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure their their education needs are catered for. Just education need, not the other thing. Because for me, once you got education, once you assess, uh, you got your uh, education taken care of, you are on your own. Yeah, they that's your gift your to them, lah. Yeah, right. You know, so I want to make sure I cover that part. Then I might just leave the corporate world, then do my things, yeah. and then do all those. But slowly, at this, uh, along the way, now I'm building it up. Yeah, yeah. I s- I see your Instagram. You got quite a good following. Yeah. Then I think you got some equipment sponsors or so. Oh yeah. That's coming up. That's yeah. non cash or is it cash? Non 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 cash. Right. So, but this is a start. Right? Yeah, this yeah. start. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, thank you for coming, man. Oh, thanks um, for inviting again. Yeah. Maybe next year or year after that, there's there's more stories to tell. Yeah. Etc. Yeah. Maybe you tell me about your Indonesian journey. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm I'm doing Nepal end of this year. Okay. I'm Which doing part Annapurna. Of Nepal? Oh, okay. Yeah, base yeah. camp. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's smaller. That's a tourist trail. But I don't care. Now it's it become touristy, right? It's become touristy, yeah, it become touristy. But yeah. But um, next year I'm going to do Ladakh in Ladakh, India. Yeah. Okay, motorbike. Yeah, so that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Actually, the Ladakh one maybe we can keep in touch because yeah. I wanted to go it last year. Yeah. But I didn't go. Yeah. Uh, but of course, like I got fear ever. That's why suddenly I didn't oh, go. Oh, between that one. also okay. No, no, no. No question, lah. Yeah. No so, so Ladakh was something that I have studied. The roots, everything. So yeah. maybe that one we can touch offline. Yeah, yeah, can, can. Yeah, yeah, never know. Interesting, oh. man. <laughs> <laughs> Similar minds. Yeah. Okay, man. Hey, thank okay. you. Uh, thanks. Abang for Pola. Me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. thanks.